Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, JK Amazy, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys an example of a slip which happens to many men who are struggling with an out of control behavior with pornography, masturbation, or sex. And I'm also going to show you where exactly this particular slip fits into the porn addiction cycle, which I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. So of course, I'm gonna keep the brother's name private, but I am gonna read out an excerpt of his post and I'm going to share how I responded. Again, I only share material like this when I feel that it is relevant to the listeners of this podcast. I do appreciate you guys. You know, he reported in the implementation group, we encourage accountability. And so we have a lot of men who are releasing a lot of their shame, staying accountable and getting great feedback and advice on using the system each time they share. So he shared, he says, hey, I'm here to report a slip. The interesting thing is that he said, it's an intentional slip. I purposely removed my boundaries to get a female escort. Everything worked out fine and I proved to myself, quote unquote, the wrong way that I have a healthy sex drive and I am attracted to women. Last time I got a female escort, I lost my erection during sex due to some emotional things I was going through with another woman I know at work. Since then, I thought I lost my erection due to the fact that I acted out with she males and I watched she male pornography in the past. You know, and that made me lose interest in women. You know, it's been months even before the program. He's like, I've been doubting my sexuality and I have developed HOCD, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, homosexual obsessive compulsive disorder, which is similar to OCD. The only difference being that you compulsively obsess over whether you are gay or not. So he said, I thought I had no more sex drive. Things got worse with my flatline. And so he was struggling. This brother was struggling. He's actually an amazing person, posts a lot. I like him and he's very serious about the program. He says, yes, today I do regret getting a female escort. I don't want to get escorts anymore. It disgusts me and this is not what I want. What I want is really a healthy relationship with intimacy. Now my head is clear of all those irrational beliefs. Now boundaries are set back and will continue and I will continue implementing the program as it should be. So that sounds good, right? This gentleman, you know, he was having some questions about his sex drive. You know, some issues happened with watching female pornography. For those of you who watch transgender pornography and you get addicted to it, it is not unusual to lose your ability to be attracted to women, especially if you are a straight man. And then he actually started trying to end his behavior with pornography. He hit the flat line as well. And there are all these questions like, okay, is this the flat line or is this because I'm addicted to female pornography? Like what's going on? I have a lot of doubts about my sexuality. So he visits a female escort and he does regret it. But he says that the important thing is that everything went well and his erection worked. However, he says that, you know, he's disgusted and now he wants a healthy relationship. Now, some people would think, like, okay, well, you did that, you know, glad you learned your lesson. Now your head is clear, no more irrational beliefs. You want a healthy, intimate relationship. However, I don't agree with anything that's going on here. And the reason why is because this is not what it seems. It is not that clear cut. And I believe it's very important for you to understand this as well. When you understand the way your addiction cycle works, you won't make decisions like this and justify and rationalize things this way. And you'll also be able to call out your accountability partner. So, you know, in the responses within the group, we had two groups of men. We had men who were like, oh, wow, that's a very interesting approach to dealing with this. And we had men who were like, um, that sounds like a whole load of crap, right? 
I agree with the latter, okay? With the former, I told them, you know, let them know like, hey, that's not an interesting approach. That's just the relapse. So I appreciate this brother's honesty, first of all. And for those of you listening to the podcast, I just want you to know that there was absolutely no judgment. When I say some guy said like, that sounds like BS, they actually said it in a very loving way. So there's no judgment here. It's a totally private group. We don't share anyone's name. You know, guys feel very comfortable sharing stuff like this and we're very direct. Just wanting you to know in case you were wondering like, oh, wow, I didn't know. Is there a place where I can talk about this? Yes, there is. So I told him that everything that he shared is, is a typical justification after a relapse. It's not bad. It's not wrong. But I truly hope that from my feedback, he takes the time to analyze what happened and, you know, separate the story he's telling himself from the facts. So at the end of the day, he is simply at the restoration stage of the porn addiction cycle. And I've spoken about all the different stages, but the final stage is after you have relapsed. Now, once you've done that, what you need to do, what many men do is they have to build themselves up because they're experiencing shame. They feel bad. There might be some very strong emotions and you need to be functional. You don't want to move forward feeling that you messed up. So you start doing things like resetting your boundaries. Okay, this was the last time. All right, I know I'm not into that type of pornography anymore. In his case, it's like, all right, I know that my erection works and I know that I'm disgusted with myself every time that I have sex with an escort. So you reset your boundaries. You know, sometimes you'll go back to your pornography filter, which you may have bypassed. You'll reset it. You write down your goals again. You might make this huge recommitment to ending your out of control behavior. Every addict does this. There's nothing new about it. But the facts which still remain are that this gentleman is still very much addicted, right? Now, in the group prior to this, he had asked a few questions and he had also asked about she male pornography, right? He'd asked about his concerns. But the truth is, a lot of times before a slip, you will find yourself intellectualizing your emotions and triggers instead of dealing with them directly. So in this case, some of the questions that he had were about she males, like, all right, well, will I be able to be attracted to regular women if I end my behavior with viewing she male pornography? Like, will that happen? And so, yeah, you know, I responded to that, but it wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough because he was looking for something that would change his emotional state. It wasn't just an intellectual question. So the message I'm trying to deliver is that whenever you find yourself intellectualizing, doing research, trying to figure out why you feel a certain way, when you are triggered, the truth is that all you're doing at that point is avoiding doing the work that is necessary to prevent a slip, which simply means sitting down with whatever tools you have and coping strategies you have and addressing those emotions. This is the reason why there are so many men who have bought all sorts of books on quitting pornography. They understand, you know, your brain on porn. They understand what happens, yet they still can't control their behavior because they truly think that understanding is enough. It isn't enough. You need to have tools and you need to have systems which encourage you to implement those tools. The next thing is right now he feels relieved because he's in the restoration stage. When we go through the restoration stage, we feel good. We're like, you know what? I may have messed up, but this feels like a new start. The truth is that you're only entering the dormant stage, which is back to the first stage of the porn addiction cycle. This is where you can go for weeks or for months feeling that you are now in control of your behavior. And that's because you've had a huge relapse. So either you're what I call sexually satiated, where you have masturbated or acted out to the point that biochemically, you literally cannot be aroused again for a couple of weeks, or you've set your boundaries and you feel good about yourself and you just want to keep feeling good for a while. 
The problem with the dormant stage is that if you don't know you're in the dormant stage, you're going to confuse that with progress. You're going to tell yourself, you know what, my issue isn't that bad. You know what, I know it's the last time. This time feels different. Why does it feel different? It feels different because this relapse or this acting out behavior was really, really bad. The truth is this gentleman will still have symptoms of porn-induced erectile dysfunction. His anxieties and fears about his performance will still remain and he will eventually cross boundaries. I know it sounds harsh, but when you act out and you go like, you know what, I'm just gonna watch this type of pornography to try and find out if I'm still addicted. I'm just going to act out. I'm gonna to go to the strip club. I'm gonna to go to the massage parlor just to see how I feel. What happens is whatever you feel that you gained from this experience, whatever deep, oh, what's the word for it? insight that you gain from this is going to be wiped away by the reality of your behavior. That's why you're still struggling with this behavior right now. You've played this game many times. The truth is, this brother chose sex with an escort over putting his trust in the system. And that's actually fine. I've done it myself many times. I have chosen to act out in a certain way over using the tools I had available to me. And that is because I was what we call a trial rebooter. And that simply means that while you might be serious about ending your out of control behavior, while you might invest in it, you haven't fully committed. And commitment, as I've said before, is simply doing the thing you say you're going to do long after the emotion when you initially made that decision has passed. This means that although you really want to end the behavior, your priority is something else. In this case, this brother's priority is his sexual performance, is his anxiety, and his porn-induced erectile dysfunction. He is so concerned about it that it comes before his reboot. The anxiety of it comes before that. He's not ready to fully trust the process simply because he's not committed. So, you know, when I share something like this, gentlemen, I always want to make it clear that when I share this, it's coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of brotherhood in this struggle because I've been through it and I'm out there in the trenches every single day helping hundreds of men. It also comes from a place of accountability. You have to be called out on this. And over the past nine years of coaching, I've seen it again and again where a man will step out on his wife after he hasn't cheated for years and years or months and months. And he says, I just wanted to find out if I wanted intimacy with my life. I wanted to find out if I could still do it. Uh, whatever the excuse is, it still is a relapse, especially if secrecy is involved. If you did it and then you came back and you're like, yeah, I didn't tell anybody, but now I'm telling you guys, you're just playing games with yourself. Everything you say after that is just being in the restoration stage. So gentlemen, for those of you who are curious, like what are the different stages of the porn addiction cycle? This was covered about five episodes back. Go back to about two weeks ago in the podcast episodes and take a listen to those different stages. I think it's really going to help you. But in the meantime, I just wanted to jump on and share this with everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week.